everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to another session of the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. We're here live on Zoom every Wednesday night with a new topic and a guest speaker that shares their photography expertise with us. On Tuesdays, please check out the list of upcoming presentations on my Instagram page at Cousin Linda and in more detail on my website at lindanickel.com which is where you'll find our previous sessions linked to the Happiness Hour YouTube channel. I've got some great topics in queue, such as a bird's eye view, which is on drone photography with Chris Crass, in a flash, which is lightning photography with Rob Hoovis, and Valerie Hoffman will be here for a session called Finding Beauty in the Broken. Our guest tonight is Stephen Magner. In tonight's session, Visual Storytelling in Real Estate and Interior Design Photography, Stephen will talk about a new trend in the real estate industry that is both visually striking and helps your clients' listings to stand out amongst crowded real estate hubs. Using his experience as a landscape and lifestyle photographer, Stephen applies it to his interior photography work to bring creativity and style to his images. And with his tips, tricks and experience, your interior and real estate images will stand out. Stephen is Marin County's newest interior and architectural photographer. He's been published in Dwell, USA Today, and the Los Angeles Times, just to name a few of the national media outlets that have recognized his work. So Stephen, welcome to the Happiness Hour. I'm super pleased to have you here. You know, we had never met up until I think we had our prep session on Sunday. But, you know, as you know, I've been following you for a while on Instagram and um, mostly because of your landscape images. And then one day, an image slid into my feed and I thought it was an ad. And then I realized it was someone's post. It was your post. And because I read captions, I read it and realized that you'd quit your day job and started your own business. And I think it's been almost a year or not quite a year. So how is that going? Um, so I actually quit my day job three years before that. Oh, was, okay. But, uh, I, uh, I finally took reins of the direction that I wanted to head in. And up until then I was shooting a lot of landscapes and doing a lot of adventures and doing real estate on the side. Um, but then at that point um, I had a, oh geez, I had a almost one year old and a wife that was in a uh, strong desire to get out of Los Angeles. Um, so it was time to become a dad and focus on my career a little bit more. Um, so I have, I've been doing real estate photography for four years. Uh, over the past year, I've been more uh, in interior design and commercial, more like hospitality photography, but I still do a lot of real estate. And um, in the town that I moved to, um, I have been labeled a luxury lifestyle real estate photographer, which I have never heard of before. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, in the two months that I've been here, it's been really good for my business. Um, I've uh, made huge strides this year. And even with everything that's going on with COVID, um, I've been fortunate to have my best year to date in business. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I don't shoot typical real estate. I did for three years. Um, you've seen some of the photos that I've been posting on Instagram yeah. and then the ones that I shared with you earlier. And yeah. my photography is more about um, bringing character to interior spaces. And um, I mean, I'll say this a lot, but visual storytelling is kind of the the direction that I'm heading. And I just saw that my good friend, Andrew Ramasco joined this. Yep. Um, he and I are now business partners. We're actually officially launching our brand uh, January, hey. 2021. Um, most of those properties that you saw are his clients. Um, okay. So he, uh, he and I have been um, good friends for a while. Um, Adam Treveo, the other guy that you were talking to earlier, he and I uh -huh. are good friends as well. They don't know each other, but um, uh, it's, I mean, it feels great to see that, uh, my friends are kind of showing up to lend me some support here. I don't know anybody else in the group except for Linda. So 
It's nice to meet you all. I hope you enjoy this. That's all you need is me. I'm, I'm all mouth. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I had told you that, you know, when we were talking about what topic you would do, and in my mind was like landscape and you know we and i said you don't have to do landscape that's you know that's how i knew, how i know who you were um was because of that and i was i was happy to have you come in and do something on what you're doing now because i think it's you know it's relevant and it's gonna be great i mean i've been following you so i'm a little partial to your work and um so I think you're going to teach me a whole lot of stuff that I hadn't even thought about wanting to do. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, well, again, Linda, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll share my screen because I do have some photos that can kind of uh, help you guys understand who I am and what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and then all right, here we are. And then that's a photo of my daughter. This was from a year ago. Um, uh, she is way bigger than that now, and she talks so much. Um, <laughs> but anyway, she's in. She's not in any of these photos. Um, the what I kind of want to talk about in my line of work is um, I focus on. So let me just kind of backtrack. The reason I shifted from strictly doing uh, real estate photography is I. I was living in a luxury market in Southern California and I was getting tired of, um, and if anybody else is a real estate photographer in here, uh, you, I'm sure you'll be able to relate to this, but it was constantly, okay, we have 90 minutes to shoot this property. It's at 11 in the afternoon. Um, get in there, go get me as many photos as you can. And, um, what, what we need to go live with it tomorrow. And to me, it, it was, becoming increasingly, increase, ugh, increasingly frustrated because um, I was typically shooting in the worst time as far as lighting. Um, I was rushed to get every single composition I could get. And um, I actually have uh, a few sets of like images from 2017 and 2018, just so you guys can see where I came from. Um, so like this was a condo that I shot in Hollywood, a condo that was probably $2 million more expensive than anywhere else that I would, uh, $2 million more than I would spend anywhere on anything else. Um, so uh, with real estate photography, a lot of realtors are really adamant about um, shooting as wide as possible and um, getting the image as bright as possible. And it, to me, like, I've, image the the images start to look the same like nothing is too unique your your work looks the same as like everybody else is in your field um and this was some of the early beginnings sorry i kind of got to cycle through like this for now um everything is super wide i've got really distorted countertops um i've got views of rooftops that aren't needed um let's see what else uh, big, big rooms that just show off the space. Like to me, this is like, it, it's painful to look at this stuff, like seeing underneath like desks and, or underneath shelving, um, uh, seeing like a, an outdoor space, if that's what you want to call it, which is primarily dominated by this water feature over here that also doesn't help that it's directly on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, but it like, it was this kind of photography that I did for three years and I just was not, I was not in love with it. In fact, the, the third, the third shoot that I ever did was actually the fake Kardashian house. Um, a, another photographer didn't had double booked and wasn't able to shoot the property. And I got to shoot this monstrosity of a home. Um, this is like my, the, the biggest nightmare of a property that I've ever shot. Uh, all the ceilings were like discolored. I don't even, at this point, I don't even know like what color the ceiling is because all the lights are on. I'm bouncing lights off of like hardwood, um, off of uh, a yellow floor, which I'm sure is getting casted from the recessed lighting. Um, just like th this was a nightmare shoot, but these were like the early years of Stephen J. Magner's photography, just like figuring out what it was all about um and 
like and just going for it like this was like a typical house that i would shoot this was actually close to where i live um and i mean different color casts on ceilings from ambient light outdoors, super wide. I mean, this is the same room and the lighting is completely different on the ceiling compared to the previous photo. Um, it's just like, to me, this is like, this is what I would go on Zillow. And so let me also tell you all, I recently bought a house. So this is what I would have to cycle through. And when you're looking at photos like this, it's like so uninviting, so like, it just looks so regular, nothing is creative. Um, every single home, every single listing on Zillow was looking like this for a while. And um, I was living in a luxury market and to me it was like, if you're, if you're selling homes that are like two million, three million, four million dollars, it's like, why are you spending so little and taking so little time to get like marketing for your, uh, for your listing? You should be uh, really going in on it. And um, I mean, it might cost a little bit more, but like, this is how you want to really, uh, strategize with your clients and really sh like as a realtor and like really make sure that you have like a good brand going for you um, because ultimately like when somebody's looking to sell their home they want to know that they're listing with somebody that they trust um, so like these were like early beginning photos for me um, just not I mean it, it to me it's like this is what you'd see any day in fact I realized when I was looking at these photos this particular shoot when I was pulling it up this would talk, this realtor never even paid me for the photo so like I mean this is like to, this is like a like adds insult to injury um like I got stuff in the sink over here it's just it's what happens when you're rushed um so anyways I did that for three years along those lines. This was when you discovered me, I was shooting landscape photography. I was going to Yosemite. I was going to Arizona and Utah. Um, I was really obsessed with shooting Milky Way photography. In fact, when you reached out to me, I'm sure you were surprised to hear that I didn't want to talk about Milky Way photography, but those times are coming gone. I used to do YouTube videos on how to post process Milky Way photos like two years ago. Uh, that's how I got a cult following through like social media and it's no longer the case. I haven't seen the Milky Way in a year, but I can't <laughs> see stars where I live now, which is great. Um, nice. So I am pretty happy about that. But I kind of, I put some images together here to kind of talk about like the genre of photography that I'm getting into and starting to pursue. Um, I'll start with this image because um, it was, uh, and you, you saw the, the final image of it, but so for me, um, I don't typically get into homes like this. I recently did. Um, this was my buddy Andrew's uh, listing, but he had brought me on to assist and to also pick up some lifestyle shoot, uh, lifestyle photos for him because his job was more about uh, shooting photography of the entire space. Um, and mine was kind of about putting people in the photos to kind of tell a story about the space that um, a homeowner would be living in. And to me, like, most people go on Zillow or Redfin or Trulia or whatever to find their home. But as you found, you discovered me on Instagram. And as I found with all my clients, they've also discovered me on Instagram. Right. And so to me, it was like, well, even if your local MLS does not allow people in the photos, you're still got to focus on social media because there's a, you're getting a lot of people that are be viewing your work and seeing what kind of, uh, properties you're getting into so why not make them a little bit more sexier and so I uh I took like a photo like this and I would add a I actually have two of them um and I actually labeled this one good lighting better lighting um so just so you can see I was actually at this sh this property for two days and so you saw the previous one or the previous photo without anybody in it but I saw that the light was coming down from here and I knew that like, because this staircase was so big that it was going to be taking up the majority of the scene. And I wanted the focus of the shot to be on this area, but because uh, the lighting is like the directionality of the lighting is kind of all over the place. Like you can see it coming over here, you can see it outside and then you can see it coming down from the skylight as well. Um, how was I going to draw the viewer into focus on this specific area? And for me, it was placing somebody um, in position right here, descending down the stairs to show that it's a grand staircase 
um, into, which is, I grew up in Connecticut. To me, this is a basement, but um, I don't know. They called it like a, uh, like a common area in, in California because there's no basements around here, apparently. Um, but I wanted to show the, the, the flow from upstairs to downstairs descending into, the, or no, they called it a grand room uh, to show the grand room down here. Now, to me, the lighting wasn't that great, but I put her there so that I can get a better idea of when I was going to return to this scene. Um, who, what kind of clothing I wanted on the person here and what kind of lighting I wanted in the overall scene. So I'll go to the next photo, which is what the finished product was. And I think that this tells a better story. There's no harsh light coming down. Um, I have a girl in a nightgown or a dinner gown descending down uh, the stairwell. There's some lighting going on in the distance over here that it's not as prominent as the stairwell, but it's enough to hint at where she might be heading in that direction. Um, so to me, like, I see a lot of interior design photography and architectural photography where they put people in the photos, but you don't see it in real estate photography. And I wanted to, I wanted to bring that level of expertise to the real estate world because I thought that it was something that was very much lacking and it was something that was needed. Like we know that like this is a this is an incredible room and this is an incredible house, but we like it's hard to picture yourself or who would be in this house without putting like I mean even even though she like I made sure that she was blurred, um, you can tell that like. There's, a, there's somebody in this house, it brings it to life, it gives a character, and in my opinion, it, it, it tells a better story of a living situation than like, oh my gosh, that's such an amazing house, how wonderful would it, be, would it be to actually see that? Well, now you can actually see what it's like to have somebody in the house too. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't doing a lot of this kind of photography in Los Angeles, it kind of happened like the, the end of last year, the beginning of this year before I moved. Um, but since I've moved to Marin County, literally every client I've gotten is like, I want lifestyle photography. Even if they don't understand what lifestyle photography is, they still know that they want it. And, they, and um, I've been the go-to, um, at least for me, I feel like I've been the go-to for it this year. And it, it's, it's, it's felt great. Um, but this particular image, I wanted to, um, this is just one of the images that I wanted to show where like, I feel like the the lighting um and the the use of a person and the motion of the person because you can see that she's descending down the flight um kind of brings everything together and shows that it's uh like such an incredible staircase and such an incredible structure um so that's one of the images um, before you move off of that one just a quick question somebody is asking what was your shutter speed to get her to to, to blur her so it's going to, a lot of it really depends on what kind of lighting you have in the room. Um, for this particular image, I would guess it's somewhere in the, uh, because she's walking in, in high heels down a staircase, she's moving slower than somebody would typically be walking on the street. So I'm going to say that it's probably within like, maybe like a sixth of a second, maybe half a second at the very most. The, the, in, light, in a lighting situation like this, it's probably like a tenth of a second if somebody's walking on flat ground where you can get like just enough motion blur. It took me a while playing around with like what shutter speed, how, dragging the shutter and what shutter speed it had to be at um, in order to get the scene. And the other thing too is um, a, a lot of people in my field, they're very intimidated by um, raising their um, ISO above maybe 320. Um, that's typically what I shoot with, but like for, for like a space like this, I mean, it's a dark space. That area is lit. If she was over somewhere in here and I still wanted to mimic that same thing with that, with keeping the same light to blend in later, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I was at ISO 3200. And it, I mean, she's blurred anyways. It's like, if it's a little bit noisy, nobody's going to like, it's going to notice it. I mean, she's not the 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 star of the show the room is the star of the show um so it's like it it just kind of it 
you really have to play around with it to figure it out. It was the same thing with uh, like astrophotography for me. I remember the first time I went out, like I shot as wide as I possibly could with the lowest ISO. And I was like, wow, this Milky Way looks uh, incredibly black and I can't see anything. And um, over the years, you push your ISO and you learn about uh, trailing stars and all that. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a learning process. But I would say somewhere around half a second to maybe a tenth of a second. Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, so this is the first image and from the same shoot, um, I did this for exterior as well. So this was the front of the house. Um, it doesn't really, it's a, to me, it's a cool looking house. It's cool looking architecture. There's not a whole lot going on out here um, from like the street aside from like the, the cool materials that they decided to, to put out here. Um, there was actually like a, um, a, a feature up here uh, that I blocked with the, this plant right here. I thought it was a little bit distracting. Um, but like, this is like a typical real estate photo. I mean, a different kind of house, but this is a typical real estate photo that you would see. Um, in this case, the lighting is actually pretty good. Um, you have it coming in from left to right. It's lighting up the front facade of the house. Um, you have some directionality with shadows. You can see right here, you can see coming across. Uh, you can see it in the, the trees. Like it adds, it evokes some emotion in the shot. Um, to me though, it, it, it was just the house. Like I needed, I wanted to see that it was like, is this a, is this a safe neighborhood? Is this um, it like, are, do people like walk around here? Do, like, is it a busy street? What, what's going on? Um, so in the edit that I did, um, I actually put myself in the photo uh, and I placed myself in a position where I wasn't blocking um, the uh, landscaping um, I was in a repeated pattern over here. So like, just because I'm blocking this area right here, you already know that there's that kind of vent setup going over on here and here. So it's gotta be the same. Um, am I going into the house? Am I walking across, um, in front of the house? Um, it's, it just adds like, it, again, it's character, it's visual storytelling. It's, mm -hmm. it's bringing, uh, life to, uh, a, a somewhat, boring um, photo, I guess. Right. Right. Um, typically twilight photos are like the, the really attractive photos for exterior properties, but um, I mean, good lighting and, uh, and subject matter, like it does uh, change. Also changing our skies too, which if you guys haven't updated to Photoshop, the new Photoshop, they have a sky replacement tool in there, which is the most amazing thing in the world. Uh, it's so seamless. Um, but it just, it adds like, even with the sky, like it adds drama, it creates intrigue. And, um, I mean, if you're like flipping through Instagram, you're going to stop to look at an image. If you're looking at it, to, especially if like your feed is all, uh, realtors and, um, and like interior design magazines, like this, this is something that you would see in like an architectural, uh, magazine. Like, I mean, maybe not, maybe not this particular photo, but something along these lines and people are going to stop and look and, and wonder why. Uh, the, the photographer chose to set it up this way. So I've got another question. Um, do you remove like, like if you have a security camera in there or do you remove any of that stuff in your images? Say that one more time. Sure. Like if there's, I don't know, maybe a security camera. Or... Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So I, this was a portfolio photo for me. Okay. So even though um, like if I go back to the original one, um, I even noticed that when I was looking at it, this wasn't a photo that like I was, this was a photo after the fact, um, like this security, um, camera right here, here, um, there was like a few other things like this cap over here, all of these I removed because these, this was going in my portfolio, this like blue thing down here that was removed. This was going in my portfolio to show off to other clients, um, okay. for the MLS, like if, if I were to have removed this house. Um, that would have been a violation right there. And you can actually uh, uh, see a substantial fine and run into some serious issues with that. Uh, this was an after effect decision for me to remove this stuff, but um, I delivered the image with this stuff on here. And then for myself, I removed the, okay. the secret cameras. So there's that photo. Let's see what else I have. 
um, here's so to go on um, with the that same uh, shot from before. We already know that this is the like seating area, the uh, entertainment area um, where those stairs descend from. And I am one of the the one of the bigger things with interior photography that I notice a lot is that um, it seems like with realtors, you can never get wide enough. Um, and I've heard of, especially in places like Manhattan, where um, like real estate, real estate photographers are getting um, kind of like taken advantage of. They're like, why don't, why don't you have a 12 millimeter lens? Why don't you have a fisheye lens? Like we need to show these apartments like super, uh, super big and super wide. And fortunately, I'm not living in a situation like that. I, like we have as crowded as California is, like there are houses that do have space. Um, but this was a, a 16 millimeter shot. Um, I, my, obviously the focus was this seating area in here, um, but it was, it was too wide. The lighting for me, I didn't love that the lighting was coming across from this side um, and it was kind of, there was more to this uh, image I felt like. So this was on day one when we were at the shoot. And then this was on day two when I was at the shoot. Now we have the previous photo of the girl descending down the staircase. Well, now I have her seated in, in the seat over here. We have some nice lighting coming in. This, it's the same shot as before, I, I'm at 24 millimeters. I don't have the staircase blocking my shot up here. Um, it's a cleaner image. And um, now there's a gentleman standing with her at the, um, at, the, at the seat with her. And I know that like, I personally, I, th this is what I wear to property shoots. I, this is what I wear in real life, okay? I don't ever dress like this. I, I have a friend that likes to dress very dapper all the time, and um, this is what he likes to do. Um, so it's not for everything, it's not for everyone, but like this is, we're trying to tell a story. Like this is a $17 million home. What kind of people are gonna be living in a $17 million home? So um, it's, it's all about the storytelling with photography, uh, with the kind of photography that I'm doing. Um, so I, this was, this is another portfolio, uh, photo. I felt very, I really like this photo. Um, and yeah, this was another good use of lighting, good use of, uh, um, putting models into the photo. Um, <clears throat> are, these, are these professional models or just people you, you No. Uh, so this is my friend, Adam. Oh, Adam, that's in the room. Uh, no, 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 a different Adam. Okay. Uh, he, he is a, I grew up with him in Connecticut, uh, oh. where I'm from, and he actually moved to Orange County. He actually just bought a house in Utah, but he and his wife, who's the, the model over here, uh, she's actually a model. Uh, um, they, they're expecting their first child, so congratulations to Adam. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Adam says, I wish I dressed that nice. <laughs> The Adam yeah. in the room says that. <laughs> yeah, Adam's got some nice landscaping outfits that he wears all the time. Um, okay, so, oh, here's, here's actually a, a shoot from yesterday. And this is, um, this is more about lighting um, than it is about the models, like mo uh, lighting composition that is about the models. The models, like, this is actually the realtor. Uh, this is the homeowner. Uh, the homeowner is the mother of the realtor. So that's why I got to um, use these guys in this photo. Um, but I actually drove to Santa Cruz, which was a two hour drive on Monday um, to shoot for a good friend of mine, who's the realtor, Eli. Um, and he he's listing his parents' home. His dad has a back problem. So two floors is not good for them. Um, so they are downsizing to a different home. But this this house had the most incredible landscaping that I've ever been. They had fruit trees. Uh, they had um, apple trees, like gala apples, uh, delish, uh, yellow delicious. They had fig trees. They had persimmons, which are my favorite fruit. Uh, they had, oh my gosh, they had so many different types of fruit in this yard and they had a vegetable garden. And the goal of this shoot was to show off the exterior of the house because that was gonna be the selling feature. The entire, the, the um, interior of the house was fine, uh, but the exterior uh, was incredible. 
um, they had a, a half acre. So, and in Santa Cruz where they lived, like most people had like less than like a quarter acre. So like they really wanted to show how much space was going on. Um, this bocce court was humongous. Um, and he wanted to show off the bocce court. He wanted to show off its location for the house and everything. This was the first composition that we did. It was in the morning. And to me, the lighting wasn't that great. Like you could see that you have the light fall off over here, uh, which tells me that the light was coming in from over on the left over here and, and draping over the right, but something was blocking it from hitting the scene. Um, so this was the first shot that we did in the morning. And I knew that I wanted to revisit it because I just felt like this, um, this post was blocking so much of the shot and was like dead set right in the middle. Um, and I, I wanted better lighting. It was just not, this was, to me, this was real estate lighting. This was like too much, uh, too much flat, uneven lighting in the middle. Um, so we revisited it later and we moved in on the composition. And to me, this is like, you're getting directionality with the lighting. We didn't need the posts and the frames to realize that this was a huge uh, bocce court. I've got a, a real life human that's tall enough that can, that can fit in the bocce court. So, yeah. I mean, this was, um, to me, it made more sense to, to put him, to move my, my camera position, wait till the, the lighting was right. We have the light descending on, um, on his mom that's lighting up her face as she's looking back at her son. She's got a drink in her hand, shows that this is a, a nice comfy backyard where people can come and relax and, and play. Um, if you're going on the market in, in a town like Santa Cruz, which is notorious for like outdoor activities and stuff like that, like what better than, especially during COVID-19, if you can't go and like go to the beach and be around people all the time, why not bring that, that outdoor uh, lifestyle home and here's the home that you can you can live in. So um, this is one, this is probably my most recent edited image, and this is one of my favorites. I just to me, I, I fell in love with the visual storytelling um, with uh, interior design photography, and I don't want to give it up. And people are appreciating it, so um, yeah. I want to stick with it. I wanted to show like different photos where this kind of stuff has been successful. Um, like I showed you this photo earlier and yeah. it's yeah. Th this area was not going to get lit really well. Um, it was the, the town is called San Anselmo. Um, it's in Marin County, which is where I live. Uh, this realtor over here is actually who um, got me started and got me on the right path in Marin County and has gotten me uh, a lot of pretty good clients out here. Um, she is all about lifestyle photography and telling stories with her, uh, with her imagery. And so to give you a little bit of background on this home, I've got another image of, of this space as well. Um, so it's a, this house was, is 1200 square feet. It's on stilts. It's on the side of a, uh, a hill or Mount Tamalpais, I guess. Um, it's, uh, it's not exactly like a, uh, it doesn't have a lot of square footage. Um, and it is also in an area where there's a lot of other houses that are also on stilts in the area. And from this particular house, you can see that too. Um, but with the rest of the shoot, it's all interior spaces, but we wanted to show, and the homeowner really wanted to show that there was an out to, outside space as well. But we couldn't figure out a way to best show that um, without punching in on a photo. And by punching in, I mean like uh, compressing the shot, zooming in, and trying to eliminate as much on the left and right while still showing that the outdoor um, space is large enough. I mean, the, again, this is a real human that's out here that shows that like she can stand comfortably out here. There's a chair. She can like hang out with a newspaper outside in the space, but we don't see that there's a gigantic house right over here, which I didn't Photoshop out. I just happened to punch in with the photo. You can see part of the house on the left-hand side, which is right above where she is, but it's so far removed. If I, if I repositioned myself just a little bit or cropped in just a little bit, like you wouldn't be able to tell. And in fact, because of this photo, you, you would guess maybe this is even part of their house. So, yeah, like it, the, there's nothing that tells you anything differently. Um, 
but I, I, her and I knew that we wanted to, we had the space empty at first and it was like, okay, this is an outdoor space, but we can't figure out like, is it big? Is it small? Like, can somebody stand out here? Like how big is this banister? How big is this chair? Um, so she stood out there um, and she's my height. She's like five, eight. Um, so she's not like a tall person, but she's like, I mean, not, not, I feel pretty uh, short <laughs> compared to Los Angeles, but uh, she, uh, she, um, she fit perfectly out there. And I mean, to me, this kind of brings life to, uh, it, it, sh it represents what she wants to get, um, get people to come to the house for, like the outdoor space, the quietness, the remoteness, the uniqueness. Um, so this was, I think I labeled this image, uh, what did I label it? Storytelling small spaces. So um, it's not all like huge $17 million homes where uh, you can get away with that. Um, here's another photo, uh, storytelling small spaces. Um, I do a lot of uh, tethering for photography. So if you look in really closely, I don't think that you can zoom in but she's actually taking a photo of herself sitting in this scene. So I guess when it comes to credit for this image, my, my wife's cousin can take full credit for taking this particular image. Um, but this was a small office. There was a huge, uh, for whatever reason with the interior designer, she put a huge um, couch right over here. Um, and if I had gone into this room to take a wider photo, it would have read like a very small room. So I was like, okay, well, let's, try and eliminate that as much as possible. And I stuck my, um, fortunately on this particular shoot, my wife and her cousin were, this is in Mill Valley and they grew up in this, in this area. And they're like, we wanna see what that house looks like. So both of them came along for the shoot and I was able to use some of these photos, but um, it, I wanted to show that there was an office space. And I mean, it, it's an iPad, but like, I mean, it looks like somebody's working at their office. Um, and I thought that this, uh, I like this composition. She's not blocking the view out here. She's seated where you would normally sit in an office. Um, we, I had her uh, actually move her feet a little bit so that it wasn't, there wasn't too much overlap. Um, they, like I, I moved items around. So there's another thing in interior design photography called tangents. And uh, my buddy, Andrew, he and I had used a photography coach for a while. And he, this photography coach that we use, um, he was adamant about tangents. And what tangents are is when one line leads into another. When she had her legs down, the, it looked like she had one leg with two feet. Um, so I had her like kind of prop one leg up so we can make out there were two legs there. Um, so yeah, with tangents, it's like one line running into another. Um, and it's just like visually not very pleasing. Um, so this was, I guess, for this particular light, a particular image, it's use of models in the image. Um, I'll go through one more before I kind of like show some of the case studies where I kind of break down my process. Um, but here's an, like, I showed you this image. Um, this was my wife in the photo and, uh, she was most times she goofs around too much and doesn't, uh, won't sit still for any of my photos, but she was a trooper for this one. And the homeowners wanted to show that, it, that there were two floors to this house. And so, but they, want, they wanted to show the staircase and this staircase, if I wasn't like directly on the glass line right here, there's so much going on in the middle that it's very distracting. And by putting a model on the right-hand side going down the stairs, and I think that this particular image, it was a tenth of a second. She doesn't have high heels on. Um, and she, I mean, my, my wife takes large strides. Um, it, like, I was able to get her to move, uh, have enough movement that you can tell that it's a woman descending down the stairs, but you can't, like, you can't make out any, like, you can't make out who it is. Um, but you can, she's not blocking this incredible view out here. She's not blocking the... Um, the print on the side of the wall or this huge one over here, the lighting is coming in from the, the window down the stairs. So you see the, you can follow the path of which she's going. And this, like, this is just humanizing a, uh, a, a real estate photo. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be people that will see this and like, well, we can't use portrait photo, por portrait, ugh, portrait orientation photos for the MLS. And that's true, but you met me through Instagram. 
That's you're right. gonna like there's right. there's other ways to advertise a home and social media is perfect and like you and i know that like if you want to get your eyes on these photos landscape is as much as the landscape orientation is a great photo uh portrait is what um is what sells on social media that's right so there so, was a there was a question earlier and i think they were um asking it when your friend adam and his wife were in the the big grand room uh okay. do you use fill flash i believe that's what the question was uh fill flash yeah so um i'm actually uh I'll, i can show it in this image um yeah. what i do with it so here here we have the scene um i, I was just um going through my folder now this wasn't an edited image at all uh, but this was um, the same as that other house. You see the living wall and everything. Um, but I, I, I wanted to show that this was a gym connected to the exterior. Um, so I put a model, I put Adam right here. He had a different change of clothes. So I wanted to have more gym clothes, like outdoor clothes. I mean, you can't really tell, but this isn't a suit. He's not wearing a suit anymore. Um, so this was my exposure for the exterior. And this is my exposure for the interior. And in this particular case, um, I think I have another image that shows. So um, this is obviously not the image that, uh, that worked for this because it, this was me testing the lighting. But mm -hmm. I have um, the flash that I use is coded, called a Godox, G-O-D-O-X, A-D-600. And it's a huge flash. Um, I've got this big flash and this is, this lets off a lot of light. And what I did was um, I put a soft box on this. Um, so it's like, it's kind of like a shoot through umbrella, but it's got like this white translucent um, light on the front of it. And for this particular shot, I had the flash blast into uh, like shoot towards her face so that I can bring some lighting into her face so that like I mean in the in the other image you can see um without the lighting but actually you can see some of the lighting on here I actually adjusted the lighting a bit but without it like you would have had just like dark shadows and I wanted to bring some lighting to the model in front to uh kind of bring some depth to the image um, and then this is what the final image ended up looking like when I pieced everything together. Obviously the Peloton didn't make the cut, but that's okay. Um, she's in front. We got a little bit of light on the front of her face so that we can, we can make out who she is. Um, I've got, uh, Adam descending down the stairs. He's right in this like lit area. That's also got this reflection going on. And the, the direction that he's heading is down towards the gym. And I mean, this tells the story of this outdoor space. Um, I think one of my case studies is of another angle of this image. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, in my opinion, a, a, it turned out to be a pretty good photo. David, David Wilson is asking, do you use HDR to produce your finished images? Uh, the stuff that I showed you in the beginning was all HDR. <laughs> um, I, I don't do HDR anymore. Um, and it's not to say, I, I think that HDR gets a bad rap. Um, I think there's a time and a place where HDR is great, but I think that it, so I was thinking about this a lot with, um, like you, the, the area that you live in, in, in Texas, I'm sure that the market for real estate photography is far different than like where I am, even though Austin is amazing and I would love to own a home there. Um, it's like, there's, there's probably people that are like, well, my realtors would never take the time for this or pay for this kind of photography. Well, they won't until you show them what, what you're worth. And like, to me, like all the realtors I worked with in Los Angeles, they would not all of them, but the majority of them wouldn't waste their time. And it wasn't until like, I came back with like a portfolio of photos where I was like, listen, like, I know that like, you remember me when I was doing graphic design, but do you remember me when I took my uh, passion to photography and actually showed you that I, I have more value than just somebody that can push a, uh, the shutter on a camera. And so when I started introducing flash to my photography, like three years ago, I was able to light up the scene and 
make uh, make images a little less HDR. -y. My problem with like HDR photography is that you get a lot of um, like color casting. So like if the, the ambient light is coming from the outside into the scene, you're gonna get a lot of blue on the scene. Um, unless it's golden hour, then you're gonna get a lot of yellow. And if it's a white ceiling, like you wanna show that it's a white ceiling. Um, I, my typical, the typical way that I shoot is I will shoot a three image bracket of my, um, where I have my, like the ambient that I want. I'll underexpose by two stops and I'll overexpose by two stops. So I, I have a wide enough range. So like when people are talking about like, oh, I need more dynamic range. I need the most, like the newest camera out there. I don't care about that because I'm using like three different exposures to bring my ambient uh, layer together. And then I'm using flash to, um, kind of give directionality to the light, um, bring out uh, the detail in, in the grain that would get lost in ambient, bring back some detail back here um, that would be lost because it's blocked by a tree. Like I'm using uh, the flash in a way that like works best for the image that I'm trying to, um, to make. So you can use ambient if, if your market, if, if real estate is, if real estate is your end goal, um, and you don't want to move past that, then go do HDR. But like, for me, I, I felt a little bit, uh, let, let me tell you a short story. Uh, when I first moved to Orange County, there was a, um, I'm sorry, when I first moved to Marin County, there was a photographer up here uh, that um, was shooting for a lot of realtors in the neighborhood that I work in. My wife is from uh, Marin County. Uh, we live in a town called Novato and her sister-in-law has lived in Novato her whole life. So her sister-in-law has a few real estate photographers, a uh, few realtors that were friends of hers, and she referred them to me. And uh, as a, an, an option for a photographer, and during COVID-19, like a lot of these realtors came my way and wanted to work with me because I was offering something different and I was also available. Um, I like our, our shutdown was a little bit different. We were um, considered, uh, whatever it is like we were we had to be working in the real estate world apparently or we didn't have to be working but if there was work we can go and do it um so i the other photographer he chose not to work at all he stayed home with his family and i respect that but um i didn't have that option i we were trying to buy a house i was living with my in-laws at the time um and i couldn't do that anymore um and i needed to make a name for myself up here um so he had he had posted on Instagram when he was coming out of his COVID-19 uh, hibernation that I just want all my clients to know, my former clients to know that I'm only going to be a real estate photographer. And if you want to hire me, that's, that's exactly what you're going to get. And um, I was telling a few of my friends, I'm like, listen, I, I, I'm not like, I'm not in the business of stealing other people's clients, but I'll take work if people come to me. Um, but if, if he's, he's shooting himself in the foot by saying like, listen, guys, if all you ever want is, is only what I'm going to offer you, then you just hire me because I'm never going to want to do anything more. I'm never going to want to push anything more. Like if you ever want bigger, better homes, you're always just going to get the basic uh, photos that I, I provided for condos. And for me, that was like, I don't want to do that. Like I want to get into those bigger and better homes. I want to work with those bigger and better clients. And I, I kind of like took that to heart because I, I could tell that it was like, he was kind of coming towards me in my business because I was working with his and his clients. Um, and I just kind of put it to myself. I was like, dude, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that people are going to want to want something different. So, different. yeah. Um, so that's kind of been like that, but um, I have a few, so this was the other angle. I'm not going to go into this one too much. Um, but this was, this was actually like a revisit. And this was also something about staging a room. Um, let me see if I can make this a little bit wider. Apparently not. Nope. Um, so I was at this property for two days. And again, this doesn't happen. We were there for one day. We were paid for one day. And I asked the realtor if I can go back for a second day. Because how often do you get into a $17 million home? Um, I want a portfolio work. Um, so the first day, <coughs> I got into the space. And it had, uh, I had staged it this way so that it made sense, but like ultimately I wanted to remove uh, the, the stuff over here. Um, I, and I wanted to just make the, the room, we knew that it was a gym. I just wanted to make it like a little bit more open. So 
these would this was kind of like what I was working with. This is my friend's wife. This is Andrew's wife. She was, she didn't have the outfit for this shot. We didn't plan for a shot like this. So to me, it was like, I knew that I had to come back. So when I came back, um, and here's another example of the lighting that I would use. When we came back, I came, um, I moved items out of the room. Um, we tried different poses um, until we finally settled on this one. And when I was done with everything, like I removed that item that was over here um, that I should have removed to begin with. But when I was done with everything, we have this image here. And I think that this is a much stronger image than like what this one would have been. Um, and I'm glad that I had returned for it. Um, but this was, this is where I'm at with my photography now. I know that I've said quite a bit, but um, I figured I'd kind of like show you where it all began as far as like uh, compress using a, a compressed shot and why I'm shooting this way as opposed to what you would typically see in real estate photography. Um, this was one of my uh, most favorite shots that I had taken when I was still living in Los Angeles about a year ago. Um, I loved this wood door. This door was amazing. Um, but the only way to show it was to show it wide or to change my orientation of the, the camera. Um, this photo actually ended up in my uh, portfolio for a time. So you'll see that I removed some things and actually changed the view out here. And this was actually a digital rendering. Um, I used to be a graphic designer, so I placed something in there as best as I could. Um, so this is like, this was my thought process. This was the shoot where it finally clicked with me, where it's like, I got to go from real estate photography into uh, a uniqueness that sells my brand. And so this is a typical real estate photo. Um, you got it wide, you're showing everything in the bathroom. Um, this wouldn't be a, this wasn't a bad uh, photo to share, but this isn't a photo that I'm gonna put on my portfolio. It looks like everything else. Um, the lighting is very even. Um, there, there's no depth aside from uh, the fact that like this tub is here and this toilet is here. <clears throat> the view is not, not anything special. Um, so like I played around with the, the scene a little bit to see what else I can get. And I moved to this orientation and I'll, in the back of my mind, I knew like I wanted this door in the shot. If I had the door in the shot in this previous um, orientation, it's right here. If I had any more of it, it would have blocked half the tub. So I needed to keep it. Um, I needed to have it on the side. I just needed to change the position that I was in. So I tried, I moved, I moved my position and I was blocked by uh, the door on the other side. So I moved my position again. I went into this and I was like, oh, this is great, but I don't have the door and I got a lot of the tub and it's like, we got to look at this one more time. And I backed up even further and believe it or not, uh, I don't know if you have a lens like this, but I have a 70 to 200. This is at 70 millimeters. 70 millimeters is probably 54 millimeters uh, narrower uh, than what you would typically see. But it like, to me, I didn't need to see the toilet to know that this was a bathroom. Right. Um, it had decent enough um, styling here. I would have removed, I should have removed uh, this towel right here because it's kind of overlapping. Um, <clears throat> but we can see its relationship to the bedroom by seeing the corner of the bed right here. We can see the hardwood door and we can see like the, um, the color that it gets from like some side lighting. Um, like we don't need to see outside. So what I did was I actually took um, in Photoshop, I took uh, the pen tool and I outlined the window and put a white, um, uh, like a white fill layer on a new layer on that. And then just lower the opacity of it so that we didn't have to see the neighbor's backyard. Um, and then ultimately you already saw it, but this is what the finished uh, final product ended up being. Um, but this was one of the, the very beginnings of like where I was like having that epiphany and like realizing uh, the direction that I needed to be heading. This image even took another, um, uh, another form. I actually um, cropped out like half of, not half of it, more of the hardwood uh, door because it was just taking up too much of the scene. We don't need the whole hardwood door to tell that it's a hardwood door and that it's massive. It's so, it's so thick. You can tell that it's a massive door. It's substantial. So yeah, it's a, uh, this was the very beginning of 
my coming to realize what I can do. Any questions or anything? Because I can ramble forever. <laughs> Let's see. Well, um, there's some comments. Um, <laughs> my friend Robert says interior photography is 20% taking pictures and 80% moving furniture. Absolutely. So, <laughs> and uh, I don't see any other questions. No worries. Do you want to wrap up? Do you have some final thoughts you want to share? Where am I at? Because I've been talking for a while. <laughs> okay. So you got about two minutes. Two minutes? Okay. Um, so I guess for me, like, I've got a few other images that I could show you, but like, for me, it's just like, when you're placing people in, in scenes and stuff like this, you don't want to overlap what the scene is all about. You want, you want this, you want the image, you want the image to be able to stand alone, but adding the human element, you're able to give it character and give it life. And for me, that's like, that's the most important thing. Um, yeah. I got a lot of stuff on here. Like here's another image that um, I'll just quickly go through this, but this is how this image started. Um, like, as Robert was saying, you move, you, you kind of stage the room, like on the left-hand side, you've got this stuff over here that I removed. Um, I put myself in here to figure out where a model would fit. And then I realized that this coffee maker was uh, a distraction to me. So I removed that. Um, I was adjusting the chair to see where it made the most sense. I was playing, I had light coming in, uh, that flash coming in this way to cast light from showing uh, that the light will come in through this side. Um, I changed my orientation a little bit just so that I can get higher up here so I can see back in to here more. Um, again, flash and then put a better looking model in the scene and position where I wanted him to be reading the book. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, a lot of it is about just staging the room and making it like tell a story that you want to uh, relay to your audience. Um, I think that I wonder if I even have one more of this. Nope. Um, I think even the, the final image of this, I ended up removing this green color cast and making it white so that it wasn't um, impeding on the image. But I don't know. I think the direction that we're heading with interior photography is a lot more about visual storytelling, a lot more about um, getting, I mean, a lot of people are inside right now. They're looking at photos all the time what better way to uh, make them see, make your images pop off the screen than by yeah. adding uh, the human element to images. Makes it more personal. Um, so there is a question, uh, someone's asking, how many props do you bring? Or do you bring any? So I, I do and I don't. Um, I can, let me open up a shoot real quick for you. Um, and I wasn't bringing props, um, but then I shot a property for, so this is my wife right here. This is that same shoot with a stairwell. She had three different outfits. It's only because I asked her for three different outfits. Uh, normally I don't need to bring that many. Um, she left her uh, glasses here. She had a, a bag and her purse. Um, so we brought, we put a water bottle and glasses there. Um, what else? Brought the iPad, we brought, uh, a, like a cheese board and an apple and a knife. Um, it just depends on what the scene is. I think I had a coffee mug. Yeah, we had a coffee mug. Um, it depends on what the scene is. We'll bring more. I didn't do anything for this, um, but yeah, it's uh, it just depends. I don't really like putting myself in photos, but sometimes I do, uh, even though I don't really fit on there. Um, but I, I like to go around. There's a, there's um, a photographer out of Long Beach named Adam Taylor who has like a big bag of like items that he brings with him. He brings like candles, he brings orchids, he brings, um, I think he brings his dog every once in a while on shoots too. Um, but he brings like, uh, fruit and, and apples and, and, uh, and vegetables and stuff like that, just to kind of like liven up the space. Um, I, I think the last thing I'll say about like the, the real estate stuff, a lot of it looks very like cookie cutter uh, because th most of these realtors are using like the same uh, interior designer. Um, if you can make an image look lived in without making it look like, uh, like a big pile of rubbish, it's going to speak more to uh, viewers than you than you'd believe. Um, I 
I mean, that's, that, at, at least it's working for me. <laughs> it's working, it's great. Okay, so let me get you to um, stop sharing your screen. Okay. And let me unpin you. Okay, let me look through really quick to see if I missed anything. There is one question here. Um, so apparently, and I don't remember this, David, but he's asking, there were wrinkled bed covers. Are they there to show lived in look or what? Do you remember? Um, so in some cases, yeah. So if this was a commercial shoot, if it was for a hotel, if it was for, uh, like I, I worked on a, a development um, in, actually in the neighborhood that Adam lives in, in San Luis Obispo. Um, no, I would remove every single wrinkle uh, either on set or in Photoshop later on. Um, most of these real estate shoots, I don't have more than 48 hours to turn photos over. So if there's wrinkles in the scene, they're going to get wrinkles in post. Sometimes I like to leave them in there to show the lived in look. Um, that probably, if he's referring to the, or she's referring to the image of the bathroom scene, um, I forgot to iron out those wrinkles. Those wrinkles. I so. Yeah, I, I don't remember which one he was asking about. I think it was. Well, yeah. The Let me, oops, hang on. No, cancel. Let me just look. Um, okay, so there's a couple of really nice comments in here that I'm going to save this chat for you. But um, my friend Barbara says it's a fascinating perspective on lifestyle photography. So that's a, that's a win. That's a Thank win. You. So, all right. Let me wrap us up. Uh, Stephen, first of all, you know, thank you for doing this. I know you were kind of like, I'll do it, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do it on. And I'm really, really kind of glad that you chose this topic because it may not be something that everybody's like, oh, I want to do real estate photography. But as I was telling you, you know, we're building a, a collection of different um, photography driven uh, sessions. And this is just one that there's a, a niche for what you're doing. And I'd like to think that maybe you're ahead of the game on this. So I'm like, kudos to me for, for asking you to come on. But um, guys, uh, Stephen, you can find his website at stephenjmagner.com. He's on Instagram, which he's tagged through uh, my posts, but he's at Stephen J. Magner. And then he has his professional Instagram page that he's building and it's Marin County Photo. Did I say those all correctly? You did, and I'm gonna add those. Yeah, add them to the chat if you would. And then um, did you wanna, you mentioned that you just started a business with Adam. Yeah. Do you wanna tell us uh, about that? with Adam, so with my buddy Andrew. Oh, um, Andrew, I'm sorry. Yeah, so our, I'll include that link as well. Okay. Uh, we, we are, I, I'm so glad that I get to work with him. Um, he's been a huge inspiration for me in okay. my career. Um, so what's, he, the biz, what's the business name? It's Bramasco Magner. And I just included the Instagram account on there. Okay. Uh, and I'll include Marin County photo as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we, he's been, he was shooting um, like luxury real estate photography in Southern California for years. And we started collaborating on a few shoots. I was bringing more lifestyle stuff and he was doing incredible video stuff. And I've gotten obsessed with video work recently. And we just, we realized that when it comes to doing projects like this for commercial clients, um, two eyes are better than one. And we can bring a sense of style to these shoots that are much different than what is in the commercial world as well. Um, and we're just trying to see what we can do there. Um, I know that it will be successful. The only problem that we have is he lives down in Southern California and I live all the way up in Northern California, but divide and conquer. Uh, you just have to make it work. And with Zoom these days, it's pretty easy to connect with people. Yeah. yeah so, so. Um, guys, I want to, okay. So this is just one of these things that catches my eye, but um, Stephen posted, and it's a few posts down on his Stephen J. Magner page, but he did a property called the Marion, if I'm pronouncing that right. He, in it, he uses drones. 
he uses, I guess, still. There's a lot of video in it. Um, it's like a cinema. It's like a cinematic production. So I thought that was real. It's beautiful. And I, I had, I think I told you, I had a few friends that lived in San Diego at one point. So they looked at it and they said, it's like a movie. <laughs> Did you so like the YouTube video to this. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't realize it was on YouTube, but yeah, yeah put yeah. in the link. You guys, you know, give it a couple of minutes look. So, all right, with that, I'm going to close out tonight's session. Um, so, thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate it. Um, next week, guys, landscape and travel filmmaker Chris Crafts will be here to give us a bird's eye view using drone photography. So, until next Wednesday, go out and create something beautiful, and I hope that we will see you again next Wednesday.